Hi, my name is Mary, and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you a non-fiction micro-review of this book, The Last Leonardo, The Secret Lives of the World's Most Expensive Painting by Ben Lewis. This is a book which I mentioned in my Art History TBR earlier this week. Pretty much as soon as I finished that video, I sat down and started speeding through it. It took me maybe two days to get through because it is so engaging, and I'm going to tell you why. Let's start with some background. This painting is called the Salvator Mundi. It is attributed to Leonardo da Vinci, and it's sold at the Christie's Auction House for $450 million in November of 2017. Now, this beats out the previous most expensive painting, which is a Willem de Kooning, which sold for $300 million. And so you can imagine how important it is that we study this painting and have a closer look at it, especially because it is so controversial. That's where this book comes in. In this book, Ben Lewis walks us through why the Salvatore Mundi is such a controversial painting, starting with the premise that not everybody believes that it is a real Leonardo, myself included. Now, the thing about the Salvatore Mundi is that it is a painting which was lost and then recovered by a man named Robert Simon. So Robert Simon is an art dealer who found this painting at an auction somewhere in the United States. It was in terrible shape. It was scratched and uh, had been repainted over. It was just in terrible shape. It was attributed to something, some sort of a school of Leonardo, some restoration or um, a reproduction of a much older painting. However, when he took this painting to be restored by a woman named Diane Modestini, after a while she pulled him over and she said, Robert Simon, I think that this is possibly a real Leonardo under here. Continuing the restoration, Diane Modestini was able to uncover and help fill in some of the gaps left by the destruction of the painting. And then Robert Simon started shopping his painting around with experts trying to prove that it is a real Leonardo. It was even included in a National Gallery exhibition in London of Leonardo da Vinci's work. Now, the thing is that some of the restoration methods that were used and some of the provenance, that is, the list of where the painting was from hand to hand, from the time that it left the artist's hands until now, was filled in in a kind of sketchy manner. So Robert um, Simon is a little bit of an interesting character, and I will tell you how Ben Lewis addresses this whole thing next. This book is divided into three sections that are all interwoven together. One of those sections is about Robert Simon in the early 2000s trying to make sense of this painting, which he now believes to be a Leonardo, about his struggles with uh, helping Diane Modestini with the restoration, about trying to research it, about trying to find a buyer for this painting. It follows him. We also have a section which is a biography of Leonardo da Vinci. If you weren't already familiar with him, it gives you a little bit of a sense of who he was and why he is considered so important. Then the third section follows the provenance of the Salvatore Mundi. This is the section that I think would give most people pause. It is a little bit slow and a little bit technical. It follows what it means for a painting to pass from hand to hand, how a painting was treated differently in, say, the 17th century in England, then it was treated in the 19th century, including how it was catalogued and how it was uh, repainted and restored. And so you get a sense over the course of this how a painting could be lost, how a painting by a master like Leonardo da Vinci could have fallen from our view and so we would not know where it was or what it was. However, because it is so technical, I do think that some people would find this section to be the most boring. Personally, I found it the most exciting because Ben Lewis does a great job of explaining one of the most important, at least in my opinion, facts about the Salvatore Mundi. The Salvatore Mundi is an interesting example of some of the current problems that we have in the art market today. There is so much money flooding into the art market today that sometimes people are willing to bend the rules and take advantage of a big gray area to make some money, to come out on top. The gray area when it comes to um, the art market is really in part caused by art historians. Art historians have a major problem on their hands. The thing is, is that we are not a regulated industry. 
with either art historians academically or people in the art market who provide attribution for works of art. There is no strict regulated set of guidelines for us to say that a particular painting is by a particular person, for example. There are art historians, like myself, who are very invested in paperwork and in hard, concrete evidence that a painting is by a particular person or has followed a particular provenance. To art historians like myself, that is one of the most important things. There are other art historians who place a lot of emphasis in what is called connoisseurship, in the idea that one person who is highly trained, highly specialized, who is an expert, can just look at a particular painting and have a feeling, a sense, a what he calls a zing, that it is by a particular artist. How people like me think that that is, mo for the most part, not exactly true. If you want an excellent example of the ways that this can go wrong, I would recommend Blink by Malcolm Gladwell, which has a great section in it about art connoisseurship. This is why I think that those sections about the history, the provenance of the painting, and about how a painting can be restored are so important, because they allow uh, Ben Lewis to take us on a trip from the start of the painting to the present and talk to us about all of the different problems with the provenance of the Salvatore Mundi. I will not spoil his conclusion about who he thinks that the Salvatore Mundi was based on, but I will say that I think he addresses questions of what does it mean to have an autograph Leonardo? Can we even have such a thing as a real Leonardo? I think he asks and answers those questions in a really admirable way. If you're just getting started in the art market, I think that this would be a great gripping book to read. I think especially the sections where he starts to poke holes in the theory of who created the Salvatore Mundi, and perhaps some of how Robert Simon's work was maybe a little bit questionable and unethical in the ways that he chose to construct the provenance. I think that the two of those would make for some really excellent, almost true crime, definitely detective story reading, definitely for a more general audience. I think it is well worth your read, and I gave this one definitely five stars. I'm going to end this nonfiction micro review as I always do with my favorite fun fact that I learned in this book, and that is that in the 1880s, an art historian named Jean Paul Richter floated an idea that Leonardo da Vinci's fascination with the natural world was actually caused by a conversion to Islam. Thank you very much for watching. I highly recommend this book. I think it was very well done and I'm very glad that I read it and I hope that you will as well. If you're interested, I'm going to leave more information about this book down below as well as some other interesting articles about the Salvatore Mundi that I think are worth your read. If you have been reading anything really interesting this week, I would love to know. Please do let me know if there are any works of art history in particular that you would recommend that I read and possibly review next. Thank you very much for watching. Bye! Thank you.